We built end-to-end buy now, pay later platform with the, a value proposition for merchants that we optimize conversion rates through a mix of lenders with different risk appetites in order to improve overall approval and conversion rates. So at the end, we are in the side of the merchant. Welcome back to How to Lend Money to Strangers, the podcast about lending strategies around the world and across the credit lifecycle. I'm your host, Brendan LaGrange, and today I'm speaking to Jaime Marin, Director of Business Development for BNPL Solutions at Fizzy, the Estonian fintech with operations in Spain, Poland, Mexico, and soon to be Brazil. There aren't many headlines in the consumer credit space these days that don't include some mention of BNPL. So we talk about its growth for consumers and for merchants, and we talk about how to keep that growth positive for all stakeholders concerned. Jaime and I actually know each other from about 10 years ago, when we both worked in the same global consulting team. We met on, I think it was a Sunday night in Nottingham. It was about 10 p.m. and I was heading home from dinner. We passed each other in the hotel lobby as he was heading out. Unfortunately, unlike Madrid, At 10 p.m. on a Sunday night, there aren't many open restaurants in Nottingham, or at least there weren't in 2010. And so I think he had to make do with a vending machine dinner that night. Fortunately, things are going better for him these days. So let's catch up. Perhaps before we dive too deep, Jaime, would you like to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about Fizzy and the work you're doing Well, my background has been always in the banking industry. I've been working from risk management to heading business lines and also consulting. Lately, I've been also engaged in the retail financing industry before joining FISI, where I'm directing the business development activities in mostly in Spain where we are providing with a new business model for BNPL. Obviously, buy now, pay later is the hot topic at the moment, but Mm -hmm. you seem to be taking a little bit of a different approach to it. So it's not so much that you're a buy now, pay later provider, but rather that you guys are enabling that, if, if I understand it correctly. Correctly, yes. Our value proposition is just to give personalized financing solution per customer. FISI is a Estonian fintech, has been in business for nine years, where they have been working with the financial sector, generating lead through three major channels of acquisition, search engine optimization, and lately, Through all the the data assets that we have managed, we direct marketing campaigns in the name of financial entities. That has been uh, proven a successful business model for the last 10 years. And the company decided that it was time to grow through other business lines. And that's how, in the last year, the BMPL was created. We just implemented end-to-end BMPL solution that connects financial institutions and merchants. We provide the whole IT solution to manage the the whole BMPL process. And also we bring the merchant network in order to consolidate a new channel of customer acquisition and, and business because at the end, one of the very interesting things of BMPL is that give you access to different customer profiles in the marketplace that are difficult to get to do cross-selling with other credit card, personal loans, or any other product that the that the financial institution can cross-sell to them. And also, we provide services like open banking, so any financial entity who is not accessing 
the benefits of open banking because they don't have the, the technology implemented in the system, etc. We can do all that for them. So at the end, our value proposition for the merchants is maximizing the conversion rates, but also for the financial services is helping them to maximize their conversion rates using any data that is required to do the credit decisioning. I mean, this, this is a long-term business and not a short-term. So wherever it is required to help the financial entity to make better decisions, it is our mission to do the best to, to help them. And that's what we are really doing now, implementing and consolidating the business in Spain with two growth paths. One is Latin America. We have presence in Mexico um, and in Brazil in the near future, but also we're analyzing opportunities to grow across all the European markets. So one of the questions that gets put forward when people are discussing the growth we've seen in buy now, pay later valuations and the sort of rapid threat that's arisen to traditional lenders from this space is this question of, is buy now, pay later a feature or is it a standalone business? It's similar to a number of products that we've issued in the past. It's not a foreign concept. And that to me makes it feel like it's more about implementation. It's more about how do you get this out there? And that's been tricky for a traditional lender to compete on experience, to get an app out there, maybe even to build those relationships with the merchants. But now you're stepping in and you're allowing many more people who are interested in the buy now, pay later as a solution for their customers, as one of their solutions, as one of the aspects of their bigger product offering. They can now provide that without needing to, from the ground up, build buy now, pay later. Yes, exactly. At the end, I see the BMPL as a new channel of customer acquisition, letting the financial entities to do what they know better, which is to manage their credit risk appetite, while we are providing the platform or the highway in order to capture those new customers. At the end, is going back to the traditional lending business through a new channel. There is no... No new people accessing the credit markets is a question of new people deciding to finance when they don't need to because it's easy and convenient for them. So I haven't used my credit card in revolving, but if I acquire something online and in three minutes I could have my, I don't know, my helmet or the helmet of my motorbike paid in seven or six installments with an interesting rate, why wouldn't do I do it if I it is very convenient? Online is easy, is through my mobile. At the end is providing uh, facilities to the consumer in order to decide how they want to pay. You said in your introduction, and I know because obviously we work together, you've come from a background of credit risk management. Is there a way that people are looking at risk differently in buy now, pay later? Or do you just think it's more about the fact that we can now offer smaller loans that lenders can take that on and feel a little bit more secure? Are you seeing any different styles of risk management of loan decisioning in this space compared to what you've known from your career? Okay, good question. The constraints of the BMPL business is that at the end you have to make decisions in real time. So that a little bit limits the ability to access new data which could improve the credit decisioning. But also remember that in the credit bureaus in Spain are only negative. So that brings some challenging into the equation. But I think that at the end we are profiling a different customer segments, very much eager to finance and purchase online. So with all different profiles that that give you access to. And also in some lenders, they have the challenge to integrate as part of the decisioning process, the information from the merchant and the information from the customer. So that is I think that is the key ability that you need to have, that is not only providing access to the person, but also 
understanding that the channel, the merchant, it gives you some insights about the quality of that risk profile. We are seeing in the market that different profiles of merchants bring different portfolios of customers with different risks, although they have the same merchant activity. And that is because the brand of the merchant also has a effect on a credit performance. And I think that is something that it will develop in the future once we start to build the historical performance in this portfolio. When you talk about these consumer populations as having been unable to qualify in the past, Spain is a market that is pretty well banked. So these, uh, well, I, I imagine these are not so much consumers who've not had a bank account. Is this because they're higher risk or is there actually a sizable population of consumers whose files on the credit bureau are too thin to grant credit in the traditional way? Uh, yes. Now the point is that most of the fintech players rely very much on consumers having a credit card. That is something that we're breaking with our solution because at the end, the formalization of the credit facility can be in loans, credit card, wherever each lender decides. I think there's two storylines. One in markets where there's a huge unbanked population and this is more about access to credit. And then there's markets where traditional credit is available. It's just not necessarily in the most convenient format. But one of the big name players here just ran a campaign with Domino's Pizza, which I think quite rightfully got a bit of flack because you, know, you shouldn't really be encouraging somebody to pay a pizza over six months. But I think what is interesting is that in the old model with a credit card, if you decided to pay minimum balance, everything would be on minimum balance. So if you needed that motorbike helmet, and you did need to pay it over six months or 12 months, 24 months, you would have to put your entire balance over that period. And then by default, all your small little expenses are getting bundled there. And sure, there were ways to work around that, but they weren't easy. Of course, buy now, pay later can be abused, but actually it's allowing consumers to be a lot more specific. And so they can just take that one big item and put it over, over a few months and pay everything else in full with a debit card. It gives you that freedom and possibly to consumers who haven't had that in the past, you know, the top end of the market, people might have been sitting with four or five credit cards, one of which they use for big expenses mm -hmm. and pay down, but everything else goes on another card. And this is just letting everybody have that same flexibility. Definitely. I think that especially in the people that are not used to financing because they haven't had the chance or, or the need to do it. It's a good way to learn how to manage their financials. It's a win-win in the, in the sense that merchants can sell more, consumers can pay their purchase easily, but of course, underneath messages of educating, I think that's part of why we have regulators. If I can finance something in the offline world, now I can do the same in the online world with the capabilities and the value added of the technology. I can do it from home in an easy way, which is appreciated by the consumer. Of course, there are limits. You mentioned one, and I fully agree, that one of the things that all the players in the BMPL industry need to be careful about how to educate the people, what are the messages sent, because at the end, we want to assure that the, the reputation of the business is good and there are no misbehaviors by any player in the market. But as any other it happens in the credit card business, in the personal loans, as you well know. So it's, it's a question of sometimes self-regulation inside the industry. And you mentioned that Spain has a negative-only credit bureau system. Right. Is there a way for lenders to share exposure data or affordability data to let them know a consumer is running up significant amounts of any type of debt, including buy now, pay later? No, there is not. The only single entity that provides that data is the Bank of Spain, the regulated Central Bank of Spain. But they only provide the data and only for banks that are 
been supervised by the Bank of Spain. And I think that is one of the weaknesses of the credit system. When we were in the Spirian, we launched some initiatives to build a positive euro in Spain, but we were unsuccessful. At the end, the credit bureau, the negative credit bureau is an entry barrier for new competitors. So I think that it has been some consolidation in the market. 70-80% of the lending market uh, concentrated in five large banks and the reaction to that consolidation in terms of of market offering is like, let's keep competitors away as much as possible. It'll be interesting to see what open banking does and if there's a, a way around that because positive data is usually pretty good as a as a step for of the course. affordability. It's a, a total anomaly because at the end it doesn't provide the required level of competence in the market and also it doesn't support the entry of new financial entities, including fintechs. And that is something that in the future, it will happen because at the end, we are letting people out of the market because they had a previous negative experience or good payers are subsidizing the performance of the bad payers. So it's totally inadequate to have only negative bureau in Spain, but uh, I think that it's a question of politicians to agree on what's the way to do it and regulate it in the best way. And that is something that is not yet in, in any agenda, as far as I know. Yeah, and not something that changes very quickly. I think one of the other interesting things with Buy Now, Pay Later is maybe it's fair to say it's revitalized the relationship between finance providers and merchants. So Perhaps it's just too long ago that credit cards became the thing and maybe merchants have forgotten the hassles they used to have with cash and the value credit card providers brought them. But for the most part, it's been that merchants have been somewhat reluctant to be paying a commission to credit card providers over the last 40, 50 years. Whereas what we're seeing now is that there's some very clear statistics that show how much more turnover gets generated, how many more sales get made when buy now, pay later is a tool available to customers. Yes, definitely. I think that a credit cards were a little bit of in operational improvements in, in a sense that, well, you don't have to manage cash. In, in the case of the MPL, uh, the value proposition for the merchant is that they are going to sell more and the average ticket is higher because we can facilitate the consumer to buy what really they want to get. We've seen merchants getting higher ticket, 20 30%, and also an increase in their sales conversion between 5 and 35%. So the business case and the return on investment for them is clear. We probably should have also talked about growth in buy now, pay later overall before we, we dived into that. But if you look at the Spanish market, have you got any numbers on how buy now, pay later is growing? The market is growing around 15% year per year, and we are expecting those numbers to consolidate at least until 2025. Another indicator that is significant is that BMPL meant around 3 to 4% of the total e-commerce sales in Spain, while in Sweden is around 20% and the average is around 12%. So we see the head of us a significant growth expectation for the years to come. And when we see so much growth, so many different new names appearing every few months on, on the horizon, we can develop a system where it's quite confusing to operate. I saw when I was researching for this call, the press release that Worldline had selected Fizzy among some others in payment platform as a service solution. So is my reading of that correct, that you're working with the industry and, and big names like Alipay and Discover to create a little bit more of a stable, scalable solution in the payment space? Well, at the end, we're partnering with new members in the 
payment value chain in order to increase the value proposition through different new services. And financing the purchase is a key component of that. And also remember that if, if I'm a merchant and my aim is to maximize my sales and suddenly I have to talk to five different lenders and negotiate with them, I may not have the skills, neither the time to do it. Well, we do that for you. So you just have to focus on what you best know, which is selling through your your web page, and we take care of the rest. Earlier on near the start, we spoke about your impending launch in Brazil. Are there any other things on the horizon for Fizzy that we should be keeping an eye on? Well, this is a very <laughs> a very challenging moment. In Latin America, the payment industry and the fintech world is consolidating. And therefore, in the next three to five years, we will have a new pure online players, not only in the payments, not only in the retailer side, but also in the financing. And we want to be there as an enabler and an accelerator on, on that trend. Being a new a new business line or a new marketplace, we need to make sure that the good practices in terms of not only facilitating credit, but also educating the people, the consumers on how to do it. And that is something that we need to do as an industry to assure that that we we do a sustainable growth in the future. And also in Europe, there are a lot of growth coming in the BMPL. We are exploring opportunities across all Europe, all LATAM. How are we going to be this? Um, well, market by market, Spain is the first example. And wherever there is an opportunity to grow, the way will be there. Great, thank you. And if anybody wants to learn more about Fizzy or speak to you about doing work together in any of those markets, what's the best way for them to learn more? They can go to to Fizzy.com where they will have all the information. And of course, they can always contact me directly through my LinkedIn page. And that's F-I-I-Z-Y or Fizzy. Uh, And yeah, I'll put those links in the show notes as well. Um, So, yeah, Jaime, thank you so much. It was really interesting to catch up. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And thank you for listening. If you're enjoying the show, don't forget to subscribe, like and share it on your podcast player of choice. And I'll see you next Thursday.